Hi everyone. Hey. <laughs> my name is my name is Aparna Das, uh, and I'm so glad I'm not standing behind the podium because you couldn't have seen me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you all for coming. So today I'm going to talk about my blog project, Black Noise. It's a story about women and India. It's a story about the 60 million missing girls in India, a story about a rape that takes place every 22 minutes in India. It's a story about those 600 million women who have just survived another day in India. Black noise literally means a cacophony of sounds that cannot be heard but still affects the status quo, just like those millions of women in India. Project Black Noise is about their clamoring, deafening silence. India. So when I say the word India, there are a few images that pop into your mind, right? And I know I'm generalizing here, but how about the 1.2 billion people who live in the country? All right, it's a crowded place, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps the splendid monument of love, the Taj Mahal. Wait, how can I forget the call centers, yeah? <laughs> Every time you have an issue with your laptop, that's where you call, so. <laughs> and then of course, the most ancient manual of love, the Kama Sutra. But today, I wanna to talk to you about the real India. Apart from being a land of great culture and an emerging economy, India is also one of the most dangerous places for a girl to be born, according to the United Nations. A bride is burnt every hour in the country. India has one of the lowest workforce participation rate of women, just 22%. And over 50% of the girls are married off before they reach the legal age of 18. The idea of Project Black Noise actually was born on December 16, 2012. This was about a year after I moved to Seattle, after I lived in Delhi for about a decade. And it was on this date that a 23-year-old medical student was brutally raped in a moving bus by five men. Men who left her naked on the streets to die. In spite of a lot of efforts, the girl did not survive. But her rape sent shockwaves across the country. Thousands of people came out on the streets to protest against such violence and to fight and demand justice for the rape victim. But I was here in Seattle, 10,000 miles away from all those protests happening, and still somehow I just couldn't come to terms with the story. In fact, for the first few days, I refused to even read about the case. And don't get me wrong, I worked as a journalist in India, so such crime stories were not really new to me. But perhaps looking at the situation from a distance made me realize just how numb I had become to such injustice while I was living in the country. That maybe unintentionally, I had become a part of an apathetic society. I was very, very angry. I was very ashamed. And I was very fearful. Because somewhere deep down, I knew that the girl raped on the 16th of December could have been me. Rape, child marriage, dowry, these are some of the most common crimes committed in India. These are a few headlines that I've picked for the last, from the last two weeks, really. And yes, just the last two weeks, all these headlines. And trust me when I say there's so many more cases which have gone unreported. The sad truth is that even the most educated women refuse to talk about the issue or even lodge a formal complaint. Imagine how much worse it is for the women in the rural parts of the country. They practically don't even have a voice. The biggest irony, perhaps, is that all of this is happening in a country that worships the female form. There are thousands of goddesses in India, and people get up in the morning to pray in front of them for prosperity and strength. But in the middle of those chants and prayers, the cries of the women desperately fighting for equality is drowning. The root of the problem really lies in a patriarchal society which considers the girl child to be a burden. The archaic legal system and the government policies aren't really helping much either. Being born a girl in India means that your father is saving money for your dowry from day one. It means that you will never get the same level of education or opportunities like your brother. 
and God forbid, if you're ever raped, molested, or beaten by your own husband, well, you will never dare to raise your voice for the fear of being ostracized, stigmatized, and isolated in the society. You basically give up the right to live the minute you're born. And that has been one of the biggest challenges in India, to change that mindset. And that is exactly what Project Black Noise is all about. It's an attempt to end that culture of silence. It's a space where women feel free to share their experiences, their survival stories, and in some way, get that pain and that anger out in the open. I want women to realize that they are not alone. I want them to realize that it is not their fault. The blog has two major sections, uh, personal stories and curated stories. Personal stories, and I call them the, my noisemakers. They are the ones who have uh, shared individual experiences. And curated stories are inspirational stories across other blogs and websites. I want to take a moment here to read a few lines from one of the stories. And this is a story by Arundhati, who worked as a journalist in Delhi. A young man tried to grope me. I confronted him, even though he had a friend with him. His reaction was so insulting that for the first time in my life, I was provoked to slap someone. It was a rather limp slap to my shame. A second later, I felt a stinging blow on my cheek and fell back on the floor. People started gathering around us to relish the spectacle. Be it getting groped in public or discriminated at work, or fearing for your safety while you're traveling as a tourist in the country, these are stories of the plight of women in India. But these are also stories of inspiration and hope. I think it takes great courage to recall or talk about a bad memory. And trust me, in the beginning, I had a really difficult time convincing these women to come out in the open and to share their stories in a public platform. And today, I am very proud of each and every one who contributed. Many even gave their names and photographs, though they always had the option of remaining anonymous. That shows their courage and their strength to fight back. One of the women actually told me that after she shared her experience, she in fact confronted her perpetrator, and years after an incident, finally found some peace of mind. And that is the effect that I want Project Black Noise to have. The reason I'm standing here and presenting is to make sure that you hear the noise these women are making. From all of you out here, I want, in fact, I demand that you join me in this fight. Don't just sit there and read these stories. Share these stories. Talk about the issue. And when I say share, I don't mean just sharing it on Facebook or Twitter. I know that's very trendy, but that's just not enough. Talk about the issue to your friends, your techie friends from India. Talk about it to the people who visited the country. Or talk about the issue to people who are planning to visit India. Spread the word so that more and more people can get inspired to become noisemakers. Thank you.